I know a lot of new and even experienced woodworkers that, that get frustrated with hand planes because even after you've learned how to sharpen and tune up and adjust the hand planes, you're just not getting those finished ready surfaces right off the blade. And with that, you're going to have to add sanding and stuff like that. It just gets frustrating if you do more work after the fact. Now, about four years ago, I published a video called uh, Curved Plane Blades. In this Throwback Thursday rerun, we're gonna revisit that video and it's gonna talk about ways to cure a little bit of that frustration. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna expand upon that and even show you how to create a curved plane blade. Because since that video has been published, even more, I believe, that camber is a cure-all for hand planes, specifically bench planes. Now that curved plane blade video, you know, it's a short one and it, it kind of is tailored, tailored towards bench planes. You know, your block planes, your smoothers, your jointers, your jacks, those kind of stuff. Not really appropriate for, you know, joinery planes. You know, something like your, uh, you know, your shoulder plane, your router planes, your chisel planes, that kind of stuff. Those need to be squared, but I cannot for the life of me think of a reason why you wouldn't want to camber a bench plane blade. It just makes the setup and the results you get so much better. And again, I'll talk about that kind of stuff after the little rerun. So, welcome back to Worth the Effort Woodworking as another one of our Thursday throwback videos. Having a curved blade in your hand plane will make creating a flat, square, and straight board a lot easier. Let me explain. Now when most people sharpen the blades in their hand planes, they sharpen them straight across because frankly it's quite easy and it just kind of makes sense. If you want something flat, you need a flat blade. But in the real world, it doesn't work that simply. And there are a lot of advantages to having a slight camber, a slight radius to your hand plane. Now people might think that, hey, you know, doing something that's radical as a 12, 12 inch radius on a hand plane might really scoop it out. But you got to understand, we are laying those blades down. And the more you lay it back, it exponentially gets shallower and shallower and shallower until even though it's got a curved edge, if it's flayed way flat, it's dead straight. Now, obviously, most planes are between 25 and 45 degrees, depending on if it's a bevel up or bevel down, but that radius will dramatically reduce. So if you're just putting a slight camber on your blade, you might only be getting a thousandth of an inch difference between the two outsides in the middle. But that thousands, a few thousands of an inch can add a lot of flexibility to how you work a hand plane. Now I keep my number five Miller Falls set up with a very slight camber and you can actually see it. It's not that much. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on one side of the blade or the other side of the blade as I sharpen it. So it might be a three foot radius uh, radius curve to it but it does add a slight curve to the thing and you can see that as I run a, my uh, my uh, setup jig, my setup blank, on the sides, it doesn't take wood off the sides, but it takes deep, deep sides, deep cuts in the middle. I can use that when I'm jointing small pieces, and I make boxes, I use my number five as my jointer, because if I don't have a perfect 90 degrees right here, I can use proper jointing techniques of putting my thumb on the base and riding my fingers on the side. If it's already at 90 degrees, I just run down the center of the board. If I need to take off a little bit more over here, I can use my finger fence to run on the side a little bit and it'll take a few thousandths of an inch off more here than over here. Same for the other side. I can change that angle and when I'm done and I got it at perfect 90 degrees, I actually have a slight recess in the middle of the board. The glue will lay out there and the two sides of the two boards will squeeze in a little bit tighter, giving me an even tighter joint. Now, when I'm smoothing a board, I keep my wooden smoothing plane set up with a slight camber also because as you're plain smoothing stuff out, you will find that I have a slightly thicker shaving in the middle. It's a light, slightly denser than on the outside. And that will create the ever so slightly undulations as I'm smoothing it off the top. It creates a sensation that you cannot feel. 
Whereas if I had a straight blade, if I accidentally took one swipe more on one section than the other, you would feel that rigidness. It's not as smooth, it's not a gradual transition. So this last smoothing cuts, even though technically it's got a wave to it, you won't see that wave, you won't feel that wave, the result will be a lot better. So the next time you're sharpening up your hand plane, consider putting a slight radius on it. See if it changes your results and see how well you like the finished product. Y'all be safe and have fun. Now let me clarify a few things that kind of get glossed over in that kind of rush of the presentation. Normally, when we sharpen our blades, we are taught to sharpen them, you know, jigs or free hand or stuff like that, keeping your fingers balanced and stuff like that. And it ends up with a squared blade. It's completely square across. So that when we were setting up our, our blades, you know, we might look down in here and you kind of judge a protrusion based upon the shadow you see, because you don't actually see the blade because two sharp edges, they don't reflect light off the edge. So what you're looking at is you see the slightest of shadow coming across. So when you're setting up a blade that is square, underneath your blade, you see the shadow pop up that looks something like this. The end result when you're planing with that is as you have a board underneath it, you get these ridges coming across. And when I used to sharpen my plane blades this way, a lot of times those ridges, sometimes I didn't see them, but whenever I applied a finish because uh, finish goes in darker with ingrain, the long grain stuff like that, all of a sudden those lines popped up. Or if I could see it, feel it, I would end up having to space my plane blade over evenly all the way across. So the last thing I did was I would go evenly all the way across a board, never overlapping or just overlapping a tad bit to make sure I didn't have those grooves. But doing that one meant you also had to spend a lot more time setting up because if this plane blade was angled a little bit, all of a sudden this would be coming down a little bit more one side and no matter how you did it, you would never get rid of those tracks. Now, using a cambered blade, we don't really have to worry about that because we're only going to protrude down, make the shadow enough so that you see the slightest of curve coming up underneath. The corners are going to be recessed up, which is exactly why with my wooden hand plane, I put in a very wide blade in there. I'm only using probably three fourths of the total blade because the corners are up inside the plane and it just kind of feathers out. So whenever I'm planing with this, I get these kind of grooves going across the board like that, which it is such a microscopic angle. You can't feel it. You look over the side, you apply the finishes to it. It's, it's invisible. It's a curved element that just doesn't show up because this distance from the sole to that very tip of the blade is only a few thousands. But a real, another really cool aspect to this is if I don't get my blade perfectly centered in my board, perhaps it's going this way or that way. Well, the camber doesn't really know if you have an even camber. So who cares if it protrudes up inside here a little bit more than here, the end result on the wood is gonna be exactly the same. Now granted, we're only talking you know a few degrees, but that few degrees made all the difference in the world when I had a straight blade and I was frustrated with getting those tracks no matter how I worked the plane. But and why does that work? It all comes down to angles. Let me explain. So I have three plane blades here. These two are straight from Hawk. Uh, I have a straight one and he also sells a cambered one that even the chip breaker is cambered to give you the best results. And then I have one that came out of what they call a scrub plane. And in our bent, uh, turning world, this is probably the most cambered blade of them all. And this is used to hog off material, either going with, uh, with the grain, like if you're coming down from the edge or just the high spots going across the grain. Now I have this bowl right here. It is eight inches across, which means it has a roughly a four inch radius. So this would be a four inch radius curve, okay? This 
blade right here has a much steeper curve than that four inch radius. But I'm gonna use this bowl as an example, kind of like I use that trash can. If I had the bowl at this angle right here, straight up and down, that is that four inch radius. If I bring it down to 45 degrees to the camera, you can see that this midpoint comes down quite a bit. So you cut the, the radius, gets expanded. Maybe it's an eight inch radius. But if I bring that all the way down to level with the camera, all of a sudden there is no radius. So the more you bring the angle down, the lower the radius is. So this might be, you know, a 24 inch radius coming all the way across, but as I bring it down to a 45 degrees, which would be something like in my hand plane, it's just a minutest of camber. Now I have even less camber on this blade and I'll show you how I get that later on in this video. But this is one of those situations where I believe that bevel up blades, meaning that the blade is like this in the plane, have a really distinct advantage because all of a sudden, look at the angle of this blade, look at the angle of that blade. How much is the camber reduced on this blade in the bevel up position? It's just an advantage that just can't be duplicated with a bevel down blade because of the bed angle of the plane. So here's a blade in my Krenov style plane. It does not have as big a camber as that other Hawk blade because I basically bought a straight across blade and then I've slowly added that camera to it. And here's how I add the camber. So with the chip breaker off, I'll come over to my stones, you know, wet them down. And then what I do is whenever they teach you to, to sharpen a blade, they always teach you to keep your pressure even all the way across a blade. That way you will keep, get it completely, it would remove the same amount of material. But what I will do is I will actually vary my pressure from here to here and then to the middle. And I'll do more strokes with my pressure on this side, more strokes on the pressure on this side, and then just a few strokes in the middle. That removes more material on either side. So while I might continuously be moving back and forth, right now all my pressure is here. My other hand is just keeping it level. So I'll come over here, do a few strokes there, and you can watch the metal shavings where they're coming off the blade. Then do a few strokes on this side, then put a little bit of pressure in the middle and just take a few strokes there. And I'll repeat the process for the different grits. More strokes on the side, more strokes on the side, a few strokes in the middle, remove my burr and get back to work. Now, if I place my blade dead on this with this flashlight on the side, you can see it's touching in the middle and that's how little of a camber I've induced into this blade. Not much, but when I bring it down to 45 degrees, it's even less, and that's all the difference I need to get the smoothest of cuts, the smoothest of surfaces left on the wood. And on the back, you can kind of tell also how it comes over on the side a little bit, because as I remove my burr, I'll put a little bit more extra pressure on the sides too. But that's for my smoothing plane, for my jointers and my block plane and stuff like that. Sometimes I like a little bit more of a camber. And here's how you can add that to any blade you want without losing the temper of it. First off, decide what kind of a radius you want. So if I want to have an eight inch radius, I can come over here. Maybe I'm making a scrub plane out of an old used jack plane, which is a perfect use for those. So I get close and I have my divider set close to enough. Then I will take whatever blade I'm wanting to do and I will mark that distance. Then use a little blue tape. Then I, I would typically kind of line it up with one of the grains on my workbench just so I can center everything, making sure the center of the blade is on the line, that is on the line. So now I can just scratch off the shape I want. This does not have to be perfect. It's just giving you a rough idea whatever shape you want to use on your blade. There we go. 
Now with a little bit of water handy, I'm gonna come over to my grinder. And this is really important. You wanna set your grinder at platform to 90 degrees to the wheel. We are not trying to put this bevel on there as we grind away material. Putting that bevel on there is gonna give you a very thin edge. That edge will heat up really fast and you will lose the temper of your blade. We are removing a lot of material here. We're gonna be constantly dunking it in the water back and forth to keep it cool. Uh, but by not having it a blunt edge, it's not gonna heat up as fast. Plus the fact I'm using the coarsest grit wheel I have because there's less grit on it, there's, it'll take bigger chunks out of it, but those bigger chunks will have less friction than a bunch of smaller chunks. So the coarser grit will also reduce the, the temperature of the steel. Another thing is I have a CBN wheel. This is basically a metal wheel. This wheel acts like a huge heat sink in addition to having a really thick steel right here. So when I'm placing this on there, I have a double heat sink on this kind of, in this particular setup, it doesn't heat up as fast as if I had a friable wheel It may be an aluminum platform. So here I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna grind down to my curve however I established it. There we go, halfway done. So what do I end up with? You can see I removed a lot, by the reflection, I removed a lot more on the sides than the middle. And with that done, I can now change the angle of my platform and sharpen the bevel, removing that, those little high spots and then finish it up on my stones. Now, when you're sharpening a heavily cambered blade like this, it can be a little bit tricky so you don't ruin your ang consistent angles all the way across. Because remember, we did basically a four inch radius. So if you had that four inch radius right here, this is the curvature that we did. So kind of you come back over here and a lot of times you can just kind of remember it. This is now my pivot point. So if I'm sharpening in the dead center, I'm going to be moving, find my angle. I'm going to be moving back straight and forth, okay? This angle of the side of the blade is parallel to my stones. But if I come over here a quarter of the way, I wanna pick out that pivot point of the curve and these two are now going to be in line. So it's kind of, you're bringing the angle around as you get to the different points, sharpening it up that maintains that camera that you work so hard to get. And it's a, you'll develop a feel for it. There we go. We got a shiny spot on top and a shiny spot on bottom and a burr on the back. Just ready, get to work. Now, if you are inducing that extreme an angle, you are going to have to hand sharpen it. But for, you know, the minute cambers I used in my smoothing plane, there's no reason why you couldn't use, you know, a traditional jig to set your angle out and just put that little extra pressure on either side. In fact, I find it a little bit easier to do that. So we've now covered, you know, my reasoning why I believe adding a camber to your bench plane blades really is a cure-all to at least all the frustrations I was having with hand planes. And it's not that hard to do, be it extreme camber, which you have to first create on a grinder or something you just do on the sharpening stones over time. In my opinion, it really is a cure-all for a lot of hand plane woes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, got a few trip, tricks from this rerun, but in the end, I always want you to remember that it's worth the effort to learn new stuff, create new things, and share it with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.